rest of you have to stay, though, because I got one for you today. It's going to be a quick one. I want to kind of switch around on us a little bit. Hopefully, I can get everything I wanted to get done. done. And uh, at the end of the day, I want to waddle us all out there to that new building. We're going to have us a dedication. We got her down and finished, and uh, I want to... Uh, I want to hold it up for the Lord in, in your presence with me. So, last week, if you weren't here, you're behind the week. I'll tell you what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to practice pressing on. Press on, baby. And I likened it, and it, I thought it was a perfect story, but some may think it's kind of goofy. Your Christian walk and your whole life now in Christ is like, to me, swimming upstream if you stop paddling if you stop swimming what's going to happen well you're not going to drown because he's not going to let you down but I t well okay, i guess i asked a question i can take all the answers you're not going to drown vic said he didn't float too well i said vlick i'll get you some floaties and you could just sit there like this but if you're quick paddling family and they said, well, where did he go? Well, last I saw him, he was going around the bend because the current was just carrying him. Oh, family, the current of this world, you don't want carrying me and you, not if you're in Christ. You better back that bus up, and I mean do it pretty quick, don't you know? I mean, I've got people wanting to lead me and explain life to me all the time, and society wants to do it. We're in a interesting position in our society today and we as the witness that he's placed here on this day had better keep paddling because what happens when I'm paddling upstream I'm headed to the blessing of God I'm headed to the peace in Christ I'm headed to the joy of my life and and like I say so much around me is wanting to come undone and so I think I put something together today that will make sense to us because we came out of a, well, I left you off in Philippians chapter 3 and where it said to press on. It said to press on. And, it, and, it, and, it, and I thought, well, that's what we need practice at, just pressing on. I have never gotten a day off. I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you. You haven't either. I don't want to take a day off because then I have to paddle all the way back to where I was. I'd just rather stay with the program and, and just go on down the road and, and uh, give him the glory. Well, when you read that, it said something, and I tested you a couple times, and I hope you had a week to do it. And I'm, I know you did, because you guys are getting good at your homework stuff. You're afraid I'm going to ask you questions. There's a prize ahead of us. Press on to the prize heavenward. Have you thought about your prize? Have you thought about what that meant? Our prize is waiting. Now listen, we're, we're, we're in Christ. I've got to promise you something. It does not get better than that. But there's something coming going to beat anything you and I have ever seen. And, and, and Scripture talked about it being heavenward, which doesn't make sense to me either. This is all I know. But I've read enough, I've studied enough, I've believed enough, I've prayed enough, I've trusted enough to know that I'm going to get somewhere else. Sure hope you don't ever ask me to explain it to you what it is. Well, I can read the book to you. I can tell you what it says it is. But I haven't experienced it yet. And so part of the message today that I want you to get a hold of is uh, in the truth of um, where we're headed. To do that, I, I think we need to realize something. We came out of uh, Judges 6 last week, and we looked at a fellow named Gideon. And um, you know what I'm looking at here? I'm looking at Gideon's. Because there's probably none of us in this room that would say, hey, God, pick me. Pick me. I'm going to whoop up on them Midianites. Pick me. Now, you all got your little secret anger, like I do. Those Midianites, they're coming in and taking my crops. I worked all year long, and then they took all my good stuff. But God reminded them, why in the world did you get in trouble, Gideon's time? 
because you did evil in the eyes of the Lord and you turned your back and you quit from the big G God and you went down to the little G gods that you could touch and you messed up and for seven years they put up with that discipline in their life. Punishment. No blessing. They got to do all the work but they didn't get to eat the fruit. Yeah, okay, well that's, that's bad. That's bad news. Finally, seven years they cried out and God says, where have you been? And then he sent this Gideon guy. I'm looking at a bunch of Gideons because every one of us in Christ can be raised up. Well, I'm thinking that, that Gideon's a, a, a special guy. He's a great guy. And I told you, and you looked at me, and you believed me. I think you did, but I want you to think about it again. Do you know there's no such thing as a great man or a great woman? There's only a great God that will put his greatness through us to where it shines. And Gideon, with 300 of his buddies, blew their trumpets and waved their torch and broke their jars, and, and God did a one something. He brought his people back. Now, you say, that's a cool story. I'm telling you, that story goes on all the time. Today. Maybe not in that magnitude. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, we've got some stuff we need to get around in this country. Not just this country, this world has gone just a little bit evil in the eyes of the Lord. And I'm not here to talk about sin. I don't need to train any of us about sin. I was raised up professional grade. I was a champion <laughs> until the Lord Jesus Christ got a hold of me and he went, thunk. And all of that kind of stuff, I just don't want to do anymore. Go figure. You're the same. So when I'm talking about this stuff, you know I'm talking to us, and I'm going to bring it right back on us. You can claim that you're the least of the least, but you can't hold ground on that if God puts a hand on you. God says, I need you here. I need you here. You're going to raise that family. You're going to stand by that knucklehead that you married. Most of you girls understand this one. Until I straighten him out. And he gets out of the way and lets me. And it can go a lot of different ways. Everything we do, family, look at this in, in the perspective of what God is doing. Because God is doing a one something. Even today. Even today. Well, that's just one story that we read. And we've read them all the way through. And that should be. And it is proof to you and I that we're not in this by ourselves, that, that the Lord has not called us into this just to see if we can make it. He has promised us too many times that we do make it, and here's how we make it. Now, one of my jobs, and, and, and thank you for that appreciation thing, I didn't see that coming, you broke an egg in me, but I have, you have no clue how much I appreciate you. I walked by and whacked Kenny, and I said, look at this, Kenny. I get so excited when somebody shows up. <laughs> I said, let's have church. We've already had church. We've already come before the throne room in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit power, and did our prayers and our petitions. We don't beat that. We've had fellowship. It's going to get better towards the end. We're going to dine together today. And we got to sing praise and worship and thank you, sissy. Thank you. I love it when we can do that. And now you're going to get the word. My prayer is that we all pay attention to pick something out of this. And I think I can do it for you today that you're going to get it. I, um, I, uh, I got encouraged this week. And most first of the week I didn't have anything. I didn't know which way I was going to go. Stay in judges because I love to do you know, that, that Samson guy. I love to do some of these stories. I just get in them with them. I go, ooh, what would that be like? But you know what? They're just a story. We could write a story. Every one of us could have a story written about us at the times we've had to stand by the hand of God in, in the faith, we call it. And God did a one something through us that nothing else could happen. But the title today, you need to know something. 
And when I mean that, the K-N-O-W something, not N-O something. You need to know something. Because you can stand up to what you know is so. Well, okay. How big do you want to go on this? Well, you know God is. I pray that everybody's got the security of their salvation. That's not a denominational thing. That's a, a truth thing. God didn't save me to lose me. He didn't bring me in and hoping I could hang. For whatever reason, before creation, I'm going to read it to you. I hope you have the security, because that you know. And the scripture I read to you today, you're going to see that. You're going to know something. So there's three somethings I want you to know today. Three something, that's it. There's going to be three major scriptures. And, and, and on the board there, you're going to see them. You're going to look at Romans 8 and 22 through 39, you're going to read. But you're going to read 28 and 39 and Philippians 3, 14 are going to be your three. So figure that out on whatever Chris wrote up there. There's your scriptures today. That's it. It's not a big flip day in the Bible. I want to start out with that because that pressing on thing is the action part of what we do. But the knowing part is coming up. Once faith, family, becomes our action, you and I have no problem swimming upstream. Once faith becomes our action, and the two are combined, the scripture talks about it in James, the two are combined. Once that goes down, and you have decided that you know for sure that you know for sure, then you go to work. That's just what you do. And you're working at what you know to do. This is pretty simple. So when we look at that, we keep swimming, we keep doing, and we keep hanging, we keep following Scripture, we do all that stuff. But I want to look at his word in Romans 8, and I'm going to ask you a question. Find that with me, Romans 8. Easy Scripture, big thinking, bigger believing, and then you can trust it. If you look at Romans 8, I'm going to jump in the middle, and I'm going to read it all to you sooner or later, but stay with me here because I'm going to ask you, do you know this? Verse 28. And in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Please stop there. I know that, I know that we don't like to just read one verse here. So I'm going to read ahead, and I'm going to read behind here in a little bit. But I'm going to ask you a question, family. You don't have to raise your hands or holler out loud. Do you know this is true? Can I tell you what it doesn't say? It does not say that all things are good. Does it? You and I have lived long enough and gone down the road in our Lord long enough to know that all things that happen are not good. But what does it say? Doesn't it say, and we know, and we know, that's where I got the idle deal for the sermon, that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It's a simple verse. But if you don't know that, you're going to have the tendency to pull up short, to want to duck out, to want to quit. I've had it. That's it. I don't want no more. I don't know how many walls I've hit like that. I don't need no more. But you are not called to say when is when. You are called to hold ground, to keep swimming, to press on, and allow God to put it all together. And I've got the coolest story this week to, to, I think, to encourage you out of that. And I got encouraged. Our faith will become our action and we'll go. When I see this and, and realize that all things are not good, and I try to put this in mind. And one of my problems for me, and maybe you're like that, is I think I have to have everything figured out. I haven't had anything figured out since I trusted the Lord March 7th, 1982. That's a long time to not have things figured out. Because it gets keeps changing. 
and I just keep seeing, and I just keep growing up, and I just, there's more. And I went, okay, I'm there. You're not even close. And then some more comes. If I could get good at anything, I think I want to get good at just waiting and knowing that he's God. Just sit still and let him be God. I can go to work. In fact, that's all I want to do is just go do something. But when I get to the doing something that he called me to do, oh, man, does it get good. You see, if I know that, I can trust it. I'm going to give you some double negatives, and you're not supposed to talk like that. Ready? So you figure it out. I'm going to give you three of them. You could say it in the positive, and you'll start nodding your head, but most of the time it's said in the positive. I'm going to tell you this. We can never not look forward to his goodness. That was a double negative. You should, probably shouldn't talk like I do, but I want you to get it here today. We should never not look forward to his goodness. Number two, we should never not keep swimming upstream. I'm telling you, you won't like it if you do. Number three, we can never not press on. Pretty simple, never nots. But if you can write those three down in your heart, you'll get a hold of something. I want to read the rest of the story, before and behind. And uh, I want to put it into verse 22. Now, I know, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's too many words. I'm going to read the best I can, but it's too many words to really get a hold of it. So I would love you to go back and take this apart in your time when you can take a while to read it. Watch what it says. We know. There you go. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have been first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in that hope we were saved. But hope that is, is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait for it patiently. Now that's worth looking at by itself. Just let it pop out at you by itself. And, and what was our prize? Wasn't it heavenward? Where's our hope? That home's coming? All of, all of the stuff that you put your scriptures to it, all of the stuff, your ideas to it, if this is all we get, family, I'm going to make a bold statement, but we got gypped. There's way more good of God than we've got to yet. I have no clue what I'm talking about here. But I know for sure that there's way more good to God than we've gotten to yet. And someday I'm going to get blown away. Pow! No sin. No tears. No pain. No wonder, no prayer, no faith. I don't need any of that. Why? I'm home. I'm home, baby. I got home. You know what home is? When you've been traveling for a while, home is safe. I just want to get home. I just want to go home. And that's the cry of every Christian's heart. And he just said, he just said, we groan. Mm, I want to be. I want to be home. Not yet, because all things haven't worked together. Okay, I'm okay with that. 26, in the same way. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Your game plan, your only game, your end game is God's will in your life. That's pretty plain. I mean, we read that. We go on then back to where I started. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. 
Now here's why. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers, and those that he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also bring with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you know that? Do you, do you know that? Have you ever wondered what it would take to rip you out of God's hand? You want to answer me? Nothing, honey. It's going to rip you out of God's hand. Who in the world would anything else think they are that could beat God? This is trouble with the little G's. The little G gods, you know, the, you know, the religious stuff that we do. Clubs and all that. They think they're the end game. Pray for them. They need to see the end game. Did you read that with me? Do you know that true? Do you know it so? Well, if you know it so, then you know something. Upon that, you may act. You may walk your faith down the road in the sureness of who you are. You're a king's kid. Remember years ago, and I saw on TV, the Queen of England went through, and she was in the parade, and she was waving. Remember that? Now, I taught you guys how to wave right. In the wrong crowd, you could get poked in the eye, but... Guys, you watch yourself on this one. You start waving like this, you're going to raise some eyebrows. <laughs> Listen to me. Do you know who I am? I'm a king's kid. Do you know who you are in Christ? You're a king's kid. Do you know it? Then wave at me. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I saw, I saw the rodeo queens do that, too, riding at a high rate of speed around their track, you know. I like it. I like it. That's it. You got it, Slim, because you're a king's kid. I can proudly wave my wave. I know. I know. So do you. Let it be so. And that's what this whole sermon's about. So I broke that little section of the scripture down from 22 to 39, and, I, and you can do it. And I hope you do this when you study. You may have to preach someday, so you need to get good at this. Our hope, what's our hope? 22 through 25, his presence before us. What's our help? 26 and 27, his power in us. What's our call? 28 through 30, his plan for us. What's our promise? 31 through 37, his protection over us. Well, what's our security? 38 and 39, his seal on us. Do you know that you're covered? There's nothing left hanging. He brought every bit of you when he brought salvation on you. There's nothing you need to know. 
But family, we're the workmanship of his hand. And we're called to do his service and his purpose. Great or small, whatever it is, great or small, we're called to do his purpose and his will. And it's so cool when we see this and experience it. I want to share something with you, and it goes on a personal level, and I'm not going to give you any names, because um, each of you, as your pastor, has accepted the uh, responsibility of being where you need to be when God tells you you need to be there, right? So I get these calls, and, and, um, and uh, I got a call from a, a dear friend of mine, some of my favorite people in the world. I've spent a lot of time with them, and uh, I know them different from what I saw them. So-and-so is in the hospital, and he just wants to see you. Well, that took all the options out of sending somebody else, huh? Because a lot of times, if the Lord let me, I'd send some of you. There's a whole lot to this story, but I tell you what, I had to do what I tell us all to do, and I tell me to do it before I ever tell you to do it. I just had to step up and drive up in the city without my navigator. <laughs> Intimidating. <laughs> and whoever in the world put Davis Hospital where they put it? Do you know the milk run you got to go to to get to that hospital? On the way out, I got lost and ended up in Tent City. And I thought, there went my life. I found it. Oh, I missed my wife. She was off monking around with lunch somewhere, and, then, and I needed her. But I got there, and I goes in, and I see my buddy. And I broke my heart. Because like I say, this is a tough guy. We've been down the road a long ways together, cowboyed up some, roper, dude, no, you know, rough guy. And the kind of guy that will come early and he'll stay late until the job's done with you. Won't quit you, won't whine on the way. Tough guy. And he's broken. Mm. So I'm doing all my little adjustments. Hey, bud, how you doing? Duh. You know, sometimes you don't know what to say, so you probably shouldn't say anything. But he's a guy. Did I say that right? So he's been working through pain for quite a while. Until a degenerate back thing, spinal thing, got a hold of him, put him on the floor, couldn't get up and scream and crying in pain. The wife couldn't lift him. That wasn't enough. Battle through some more. They had a story that went with this. So they go to the doctor, and the doctor says, yeah, you got some issues. And came home, put him on something, and it didn't work. Trying to get the pain down, right? Oh, by the way, brother and sister in Christ, full-blown, served with them. And uh, know, know the game, know the word. And uh, a couple weeks go by, and nothing's happening except it's getting worse. About two and a half months go by of just pure pain, disillusionment. That's the wall. I don't want no more. I've had it. I, you know, and the dark spots start to come into you, the, 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 the ideas that have nothing to do with God. Furious. And he finally got into a guy, and they read the MRI, right, and said, Bud, you're in big trouble, and they shipped him to Davis. But if he had got the back surgery that he wanted, it was a fusion. They did that um, stem cell stuff on him, and it didn't work on him. I know it does on some, they say. But they couldn't stop it. This thing was running backwards. And, and they were going to fuse the back of this thing, and, and, uh, and the, and the doctor says, oh, the doctor, whoa, 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 I can't do that. He says, you've got other issues. And if they would have had the surgery when they were supposed to have had it, they would have not found these other issues, and he's filled with tumors. You talk about running the wrong way downhill? Now, here's the story. Here's the story. Here's Romans 8 and 28 for you. 
And they stopped there for about two and a half months of just literally this side of heaven. And they literally both hit them the same time. And the wife told me on the way home on the phone through tears. She said, I was going down the road and the Lord showed me something. He showed me because they wanted it done. Don't you want it done when you hurt me? Fix it. And, and, and she said it wasn't being fixed. And the frustration picked up and just mounted up. The whole thing was running wrong. And she said, I'm so thankful. She said, because they would have never found this other deal if they would have done it then. She said, now we got the package deal and we can attack it. And she said, I'm going down the road praying and thinking, mad, most of it. And all of a sudden, she said, a peace came on me. And I went, oh. So I goes up to visit my bud, and uh, he's telling me the story, and he's walking through it with me, and, and um, can't sit a horse anymore. Can't get out of the house. And he said, you know what, all of a sudden, I'm sitting here playing it and playing it and playing it. He said, all of a sudden, by itself, I mean, there's two different instances. He said, all of a sudden, a peace came on me. And I kind of sat back on my own, and I thought, so that's what it looks like. That's what Romans 8 and 28 looks like in flesh. Feet on the ground, living through the not-so-good and I went, oh my, that's what it looks like. And of course, I got to read scripture to him. And of course, I got to pray with him. And I was telling the boys in Sunday school, there was one little deal. And here's this little young nurse. Of course, everybody now is young. What happened? <laughs> I need some other old people to hang out with. Everywhere I go, there's young people. I'm going, dang. But anyway, here's this young little nurse and just as pleasant as you're going to get and and she's buzzing around there and I'm talking with Scott and we're talking pretty good stuff and uh, about being strong and you know walking he said oh I'm in he said I can't quit and I mean he's witnessing back to me and I'm witnessing to him and we're encouraging each other and she started to walk out I said sweetheart I said we're, we're, we're fixing to have some prayer <laughs> I said we're fixing to have some prayer and what in the world could we pray with you about? She just melted. And I, here's my point. You never know where you're at, who's being affected. I'm not talking to her. I'm talking with my, I mean, we're hooked up now. And she just floating. And she came over and she says, and she's, she, it broke her. I watched her, watched it in her face. Well, I can only see that much, but. Watched it in her eyes. She said, would you pray that I'm a good nurse? And I wanted to say it's already answered. Because she was getting him graham crackers, and she was giving him his little pain meds, and, and she was just hovering over him, and I'm thinking, oh, isn't that precious? Broke her. And what the Lord did, by the witness of you being you in his will, will reach out and set the hook bow, in somebody else. That wasn't a story about the preacher boy, the patient boy. That was a story about God's will going down and, and the ripple effect of that. And I don't know where it stops. I don't know if it does stop. Lit her up to the point of broke her, and on the way out, I got a massage. He says, oh, thank you, and... and Okay. <laughs> she didn't know how to love me. She didn't know how to thank me. But God put it on her that she just she just was glad to be there. And I'm thought, oh my. Now listen. I'll tell you the rest of the story. Had a cow die at the ranch. I switched gears with me, not far. And there's a little baby. I couldn't catch the little baby. Now, I have an orphan on the ranch going back, trying to wake his mom up and all that stuff and going up with the cows. Nobody's going to let him. And so he's coming back, looking for mom. I said, i got to catch that sucker. My job that morning before I got the phone call was to catch that sucker. And I tell you what, it's like chasing a rabbit across the cornfield. You're not going to get him. 
but I'm going to try. Susie said, why don't you rope him? I said, do you need entertainment? <laughs> but I'm, I'm starting to focus up now. You know how you do. I'm going to catch that calf. If I have to put the dogs on him and knock him down, I'm going to catch him. Well, I got the call, and, and I disciplined up and did my thing. I did what God called me to do. You want to hear something? I get home, about to go down for the night, get them boots off, and I look up on the hill. Here comes that calf. Buh, buh, buh. I went, for whatever reason, I had three cows still on this side of the hill. I told her, put your boots on, Mama. We're not done yet. <laughs> and we went back out there, and I grabbed some hay, and, and I, I, they're pretty well trained. Boot. Here they come. This time of year, I own every one of them because feed short. Chuck, you know what I'm talking about. Feed short, and I own every cow up on that hill when I put the holler on them. And here they came. Guess who came in right behind them? Into the corral. And all I did was close the gate. <laughs> now, I'm fixing to tell you what a good cowboy I am. And I want you to believe it. Because I closed the gate. You see what God did? I'm just going to tell you what I know. I want you to see what you know and let it be so. Because he pulled me off of what I wanted to do or I thought I had to do and moved me where his will said I needed to be, and bigger stuff than that calf happened. That's everyday story for you and I. Every day. And by the way, Jennifer had a cow over there that was still wet, and I threw the calf in with her and said, live or die, sucker. You're on your own now. But about the time that cow's bag gets tight, she's going to need some help. And that little calf's going to be, pick me. And he'll go down. He'll probably live now. He's probably six, eight weeks old. I could probably grain him up and feed him up and get him up. But he'd be runted or something. Story. One man's story. Doesn't have to be a pastor's story. It's your story, too. If you do what you know to do, would you let God be God? So my question is, what do you know? What do you know? I want three scriptures for you. If you don't see them on the board, I want you to write them down. I want you to know Romans 8, 28. I want you to know Romans 8 and 39. I want you to know Philippians 3 and 14. And that one says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Three, we'll take you down the road. We'll swim you upstream. We'll hold your ground, however we're going to say it. And you will be in the center of where you're supposed to be as a servant of Almighty God. I would like to, um, I would like to pull you out of your comfort zone. I'd like to end this part of the service, and I'd like you all to, uh, um, we can cut out through the doors, dry ground. I want to meet and go out to the new building. I think Joe put some ribbons up on the building. Somebody's going to get a cutter. We'll cut the ribbons. We're going to dedicate that building to the glory of God. You guys that have been here a while know that this is a, an ongoing moving target, and, and we've done everything here. As, as here. We call it the Geritol crew because a bunch of us that, that are here during the week to fix things are the guys that had real jobs at one time. So now we take our Geritol and we go to work. And uh, I want to do a dedication of the building in the, in the loving memory of two of our brethren that have gone on before us. Now listen, I think you'll make this trip with me. You know what the prize is after the trip's over? Lunch lunch family and it's already lined up on the counters lunch is available we've got 20 minutes i want to walk out there and close this part of our service with a dedication would you go with me
well, let's go then. I'll meet you on the sidewalk. Don't cut the tape till everybody gets there. Susie, where's the picture in the... <laughs> 